Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Forza Motorsport. Yes, it is a week late, but this is my take on what has happened in the past year for Forza Motorsport. As many of you know, I bought this early access. I played through it for a couple of months and I genuinely really, 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 really tried to get into this game and I played a lot more hours than I was thinking I would but at the end of the day it just didn't click for me so I wanted to take some time away from this game and let the developers turn 10 really work on this game and get this game into a better place and now that it's been a year since release my take on it is just this it is still the same game that it was at launch. As far as... Oh, God. I probably deserve that, considering I was trying to spin out this Cadillac. <laughs> Come on. Can we make it? There we go. Fundamentally speaking, this is the same game that it was at launch. But... Since then... The majority of the bugs, if not all of the bugs, have been patched out. For playing this for the last couple of hours today, I haven't had any bugs whatsoever. Turn 10 has added 8 new tracks and has added 117 cars since launch. And those numbers are absolutely outstanding in my mind. It really shows the dedication, persistence, and determination that Turn 10 has in turning this game around from, in my mind, an absolutely catastrophic launch. But unfortunately, a type of launch that we've seen come day in and day out with racing games. That unfortunately is pretty typical. But since then, there have been so much more than just cars and tracks and bugs that have been patched in. There have been multiple game modes being added. Multi-class racing. Keep in mind, Gran Turismo 7 doesn't even have that yet. There's a full-fledged drift mode. And there is... A spectator mode all have been recently added and I think that has been absolutely phenomenal being able to add such game-changing game modes and yes we can argue that they should have been there at launch but when it came to launch it's another one of those stories of a trillion dollar company extracting as much money as possible from a tiny development team or I, I won't call it tiny but from a development team and unfortunately that development team gets all the garbage thrown on them when everything doesn't go well but they're not given the resources to really do their best the thing that I'm very excited about is that Microsoft has versus pulling the plug on turn 10 a month after release and saying we're just shutting down the studio you guys didn't make us a billion dollars you're done. I appreciate that turn 10 is still here and I appreciate that they are still working on this game and giving us content well after a release. Furthermore my point being is at release it's not worth the $70 game. I still think now it's still not worth the $70 game. But it's definitely getting to a point where you're getting more value for your money. One of the interesting things that I've noticed almost straight away when I got back into this, I swear six months after playing this game, was the handling model has been updated. Now, I'm not sure if they really made mention about this in the patch notes, but my personal observations are the steering is heavier. I think that could have just been a setting that I had. But it seems like that the force feedback is more detailed than it was at launch. 
And when I start to feel the car slide out from underneath me, I think it actually does a better job than even Gran Turismo 7 does. It just, you can really feel the steering getting light as the back end is really kicking out. The thing that I've noticed too is that the Drivatars, the AI, are absolutely, they're still terrible, unfortunately. They're, the race start, the people in front of me just like don't go off the line and they're going much slower than everybody else and with a race start you're in a grid formation so you really can't go around them so you're just kind of stuck behind them and you run into the back of them and then you get this massive two second penalty or whatever because you collided with them and caused a collision it's like well they didn't go anywhere what do you want me to do you know and the other thing is, yes, we riff on Polyphony for Gran Turismo 7's AI being rather... Where am I going? For being rather dumb in the standpoint that if you're... If they're given a blue flag, they'll continue being on the racing line. But with this AI here, I've never seen AI just... In the way that this AI completely ignores you and... Gran Turismo 7's AI, they'll run into, yes, but very rarely have I had them spin me out. There have been four or five instances where I had to restart this last race because on the opening lap, we get down to turn five and the AI just gets into a pit maneuver place and just completely removes me from the map. And it's like, are you... And... Ugh. I wanted to come back to this video with a fresh mind and a fresh start because I know Turn 10 have done an immense amount of work in this last year. I didn't want to be one of those sim racing reviewers who just came back on after a year and said, this is still a shit game. Don't buy it, don't waste your money, and then leave again. I really want to give this a fresh perspective. Because there is a whole community of sim racers who have put in their time day in and day out playing this game, whether it be by themselves in an online environment or in like a racing league with their friends, playing multiple times a week Getting excited for those week for those monthly content updates. And I don't want to make this video a disservice to them. But I also want to show the reality of, a sit of the situation to somebody coming back after not playing for a while, you know? See, that's kind of what I was talking about earlier, about how people in front of you are going slower and you just get a collision penalty because of it. Now, the other thing that I want to discuss about is kind of going back to the content. Is that we're now up to 28 courses with Forza Motorsport. And I remember the number with Gran Turismo 7 being about 33, I want to say, on launch. And both games have obviously added more courses since their respective launches. So we're getting to the fact that we're going to easily have over 30 courses coming by mid-2025 for Forza Motorsport. So we're now starting to become a little bit more on par with, well, Forza's competitors. And I think that is honestly really nice to see, finally. I'm sad to see that it's taken, it'll be well over a year and a half since launch for this to finally happen. But it's really nice to see, again, Turn 10 doing their due diligence and making sure that there's a large amount of content for their players to have. And again, there's, I want to say, six, seven of these courses are fictional courses. And again, really cool to see them going out of their way to make new original 
courses. Now, the car selection as well, as we've discussed many times before, and many other content creators have discussed before, is that the car selection is nice, it is wide, and it's varied, but the car level quality is not to the same level as Ford's competitors. But I will say, it is very nice to have a more recent racing series being added. So, for example, like, the the hypercar level of WEC is in this, for the most part. And we still don't have that in Gran Turismo 7, and there's no rhyme or reason why that it isn't there. And I'm still very annoyed about that, because I'd love to race as, you know, the Cadillac V-Series R. And then, more or less, shall we discuss as well, that in Gran Turismo 7, the entire GT3 grid is between 6 and 10 years old, and here it's probably closer to, like, 3. So definitely more recent vehicles being used here. One of the interesting things that I found with this is that it, since kind of gave, it took me a couple of hours to really get into this, get all the settings figured out, get all the button maps figured out once again, to finally get into a couple of good races and really feel dialed in, per se. It was interesting because this game was foremost developed for Xbox. So it's kind of that mentality of you just hop in, you play, you do a couple of rounds, and then you're good. So to have on the PC port this feeling kind of more typical of an experience that you would have with like, for example, a set of Corsa, Compizioni at least, where you need some time to get the settings dialed in before you can really jump in and really go. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I don't know if that's just kind of something that I've only had an issue with that, you know, you guys maybe not have. So let me know down in the comment section below if you guys have had kind of a similar thing or maybe because it's been a couple of months since I've played that I needed that first time setup once again. I was hoping that after all of this time we get some more confirmation as far as Steam Deck compatibility. I wasn't really holding my breath on this one, but by the sounds of it here, still nothing unfortunate, unfortunately. Like I said, I wasn't really expecting much to happen, but with how my playstyle is, I do a little bit of racing in the reg, you know, a couple times a week, but the majority of my game, the majority of the gaming that I do is on my Steam Deck, on my couch upstairs while watching TV. And because this is a more arcadey game, I feel like it would really, really work well with the Steam Deck. So, kind of like the videos that I've made before in the past, for the time being, we'll still have to do remote play, or we'll still have to do, like, the Windows 10 or Windows 11 dual boot. Which is not ideal for this game, because the frame rate is really kind of... It takes a massive hit when you do this on Windows 10 or Windows 11 on Steam Deck. And the latency goes even worse when you're doing it on remote play. But, you know, it is what it is. So I'll just have to... If I want to play this more, I'll just have to get used to it, per se. So on all, a lot of good things, a lot of still questionable things, a couple of bad things still kind of going on here. So... That all being said, I personally feel that this is a world of difference since the first couple of months of playing this. It really is just like night and day difference. I still think Turn 10 have got a long ways ahead of them, but from what they've been doing, it is showing that they're going on the correct path of really making this into a viable game. I'm not going to say that it's going to be like a No Man's Sky situation where it goes from absolutely catastrophic launch to award-winning game. 
guess to be fair, this game technically is an award-winning game. God. Don't like bringing that up much, but... I think that... The soul is here, somewhere, deep down, is... A lot of people have talked about this game being soulless, and... When Microsoft is your head company, that kind of happens. But I think Turn 10, deep down in there, are recreating the soul of the game that this had lost on launch. And I think the community slowly coming back and is... We're getting there. This game is going somewhere. And I honestly probably, if I can find a good way to get this on the Steam Deck and really get it to work well, I think I will come back to this game. I think I might come back and discuss the monthly content updates because ignoring them is only doing a disservice to turn 10. For all the hard work that they've put in since launch against what Microsoft has given them. You know, Microsoft has done basically everything in their power to take away resources and with Turn 10's contract work of only being 12 to 18 months, if not less, for some of the main art designers and all the rest of it, this is really sad to see. But I think Turn 10 have done an exceptional job given that that's been the situation that they've been dealing with. So, yeah, like I said, I think I do want to bring this back into the fold. You know, something that I discuss on a more regular basis. Because we can't just have Gran Turismo 7. I mean, there's, there's more to sim racing than just that one game. And I'm glad that Turn 10 is, are continuing to work on this game. I really am. So, at this point, I'm just kind of rambling and going in circles. You guys kind of get my gist. There's good things coming, and I'm glad to see it. So, let me know down in the comment section down below if you guys are feeling the same way. If Let me know if you guys have been playing Forza Motorsport this entire time. Uh, for those who have, please definitely let me know your experiences and what kind of a roller coaster it's been. And for those who haven't been playing it recently, let me know if you're kind of sharing the same thoughts that I am, or it's like, hey, maybe this is something worthwhile to jump back into. So again, let me know all your comments, thoughts, and opinions down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye!